Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of the history of the British newspaper comic strip. Now this is by Dennis Gifford. This book came out in 1971 and it's from Shire Publications. That's a fairly thin book. It's 96 pages in total. And you can see it's a fairly thin book. So what does it include? Well, lots and lots of newspaper strips. So weirdly, it's got the word, I don't know what it's got D. C or something there or something. However, Stap Me. That's slightly confusing. There is also another book called Stap Me. So I'm not certain if it's the same book or no idea. However, it's got a nice little introduction. You've obviously got Jane there and you've got a little things. You've got a little cartoon there. Helpful Horace. Actually looks very much like Pogo, to be honest. Similarities anyway. You've got Willie's New Year Resolution. Obviously, this one is from 1915. I don't recall that one at all, but I do know the paper, Daily Mirror. So you've got loads and loads of examples. You've got here the Daily Mail. Clearly, these cartoons changed over time. So this one's a sports cartoon. And there's not really much. There's not very many books of these sort of things. Now, of course, you've got all the fluke, and you've got uh, the Andy Cap and Fred Bassett, and those sort of ones. There's a few, those got Garth comes to mind, collections. But they're all fairly, fairly small, of course, because that's obviously probably the size that they would near enough drawn at. So, uh, and you've got this one here. This one, I'm not even certain when this was. 1921, 1942, 1946. Pop, apparently. And then all the way through here, 1947. So you've got great examples of the way the world was changing here. Dab and Flounder. Can't say I've ever heard of that one. Boy it Meets Girl. And you've got, let's see, there's probably going to be one. At some point, I will actually find one that I actually know. Now, actually, weirdly, it jumps backwards and forwards. So you've got here, Barely Bottom. This one is Daily Herald. And also you've got The Guardian, 1971. And then, of course, 1971, 1969. And then back to 1938. So there's no particular uh, date or chronological order. So The Ghost of Sawtooth Range. Then Sunshine Falls, Jimby, and of course you've got, wow, that is so weird seeing Fluke like that, because I loved the Fluke one in the Daily Mail, and this was obviously 1949. Now, I was looking online to see if there were any books of these sorts of things, and actually, strange enough, there's not that many. I mean, there's obviously all these Fluke annuals and things, collections, but there's no real massive big volumes of books about some of these various comic strips. Weirdly, they've just been near enough ignored. You know, like some of the sort of large books you get from America. It'd be nice to see a sort of sizable sort of volume like that there. So you've got here Horatio Cringe. Very similar to another character as well. So let's just go to another one. Oh, I do know Bristow, 1969. Now I assume maybe it was even earlier than that. So you've got Bristow there. I assume that's still going. I'm not certain actually. Obviously Evening Standard, I haven't looked in Evening Standard for quite a few months. Once I get up to London more often, pick up an Evening Standard. I always enjoy picking up Evening Standard. Hamish, and you've got here All In Day's Work, Switch Over, Daily Mirror, and JJ. And that looks very similar to number 10. Always remember that one. Very good. Number 10 one there by Maddox. Uh, Ruggles, Gambles. Always remember Gambles. Day Express. Not that I particularly... So this is trouble, because is that if you don't get that particular paper, lots of these cartoons you probably would never know it. So uh, I very rarely buy the Daily Express. So uh, and likewise, Daily Mirror. Not certainly, a, you know, I do occasionally buy these papers. So uh, it's uh, and you've got now. I remember the Larks. I remember that one, Jack and Jill. I do remember that one, Jack and Jill. So you've got Jack and Jill there, and you've got this one, the Chirrups. And I've actually been looking online just to see, like, say, if there are any collections for some reason. I've just gone through quite a few. You just can't find anything. The Chirrups, Sunday Pictorial, 1947. So go through there. The Nipper Blender, Blender something, Blue Eyes, Al Wilhelmer, Hamish, His Nibs, Horatio. Oh, I remember that one from earlier. Come on, Steve. And there's just so many. There's a lots and lots. I mean, this is one thing this book definitely does show. Up. Now, I don't know if this is complete. Every single newspaper strip, I'm not certain if they've all been included. So there might be someone, some that came out for a couple of weeks. Who knows? Maybe Dennis Gifford didn't include them. 
However, you've got Chipper, Fred Bassett, of course. I fucking love Fred Bassett. Fred Bassett's pretty good. You've got Caesar, Raf. Obviously, so there's quite a few dog dog ones there. Obviously, popular. Weirdly, well, I was going to say, not many cat ones, but there's a cat one on the next one. Hayseeds. So you've got the Hayseeds there. Gug Nung. No idea what that means. However, Rupert's Revenge. Obviously, Rupert Bear. Looking very strange, actually. Now, that's Daily Express Children's Own, 1933. Quite weird when you see some of these uh, cartoons, when you see some of the characters very early. Obviously, I don't know when Rupert started. Oh, number one here, 1920. Very, very different. And then you've got Bobby Bear. And let's go on to, you've got the heroes. So you've got heroes here. Buck Ryan. Paul Temple, I love the Paul Temple films on Talking Pictures TV. They've got, recently anyway, had loads of the Paul Temple ones. They're great. They didn't make too many of them, unfortunately. But always very enjoyable. So you've got Paul Temple there. Now, I'm not saying about Buck Ryan. Where the Buck Ryan ever got a film series? James Bond, I love those collections. You can get those Titan Books ones. Absolutely superb. Really great looking at those. Now, I'm not a mega fan of James Bond. I mean, they're okay. I'm not saying that I'm sort of... But I quite like the cartoons. The comic strips are actually pretty good. And there's some examples there of James Bond. You can obviously sort of Sean Connery look alike. And then you've got The Seekers, a series that definitely, definitely should have it's up a big book, Saga of Garth. Now, Garth looks really odd. Now you've got Garth there. Of course, there's quite a few Garth books available. Uh, Jeff Hawk, another one that uh, is readily available. So you've got Space Rider. And then you've got Matt Marriott. Never heard of it. Wes Slade. Uh, from, uh, Matt Slade. Hmm, not certain. However, you've also got these ones. Jane, of course, I do know of Jane. And there's a lovely collection of Jane's book. Now, I don't think it includes everything of Jane. But there's certainly a Jane Avengers of or something similar to that. Spotlight on Sally, Susie. Patty, Jane, daughter of Jane. Then you've got Paula, Judy. That's quite a few. Oh, single name. One's Paula. And, oh, no, you've got one here. Carol Day. I love that one. That's worth checking out. Carol Day by David Wright. David Wright has produced some beautiful artwork over the years. So that's Lindy and Tiffany Jones. Another collection. I've got one little book of Tiffany Jones in Italian. I mean, really? Why isn't there a massive, huge collection of Tiffany Jones? A lovely period, 1960s slash 70s, obviously 1964 for this one, of Tiffany Jones. What a period things, 1960s, swinging 60s. And yet, and this one, Scarth. So again, a lovely series that virtually impossible to find anything of that, unless you've got the old newspapers. And that's about it. And this one as well, the last one, Guardian, 1969. I can't say it, Varunshka. Vroomshka. And then you've got the index of the titles at the back. And then you've got well, some other listings at the back, printed by Maud and Irvin Limited. So 100 examples, it says here, illustrates about 100 examples on the back. Well, I absolutely love this collection. I mean, it's a, an unusual collection. and But unfortunately, that's near enough about it in terms of British newspaper comic strip. Really sad. There should be definitely more books available on this subject, but... Um, well, this is definitely worth checking out. Totally recommended.